like, oh, 10 minutes out of the day. We always go, oh, shit or good. It was oh, I mean, that's, that's, totally. That's the key to a successful marriage is just not being there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other husbands and wives. <laughs> but when, you, when, you, when you are together, you've got, like you say, you've got the time, yeah. you've got the, the things to talk about. If you're in each other's pockets all the time. It's just. Yeah. And, so, I, and I think selfishly, well, not selfishly, I'll, we'll probably go into it, we'll touch on it later on. But for me, my previous marriage, I think there was a lot of me doing things. Yeah. And the reasons I will go into, yeah. um, <coughs> which then meant that she wasn't doing a lot and there was a, there was a whole lot, host of other things. But yeah, yeah it was, it's finding that balance, isn't it? It's finding yeah. that balance where you're both, you know, yeah. doing something. Yeah, you know, yeah of yeah. course. You don't feel so bad about going yeah. fishing. <laughs> yeah, Which, I mean, I still get out, but it's it's like you said, it's about planning. Yeah, so I can't yeah. do sporadic like, oh, well, I'm I'm going out next week, yeah. darling, you know, because that would just not work. Yeah. Um, but we plan our fishing probably within a year, don't we? Yeah, we plan. Wow. So wow. We so plan, you really put it in. We, we plan. We know when we're doing it, and we do. Our fishing group, aside from the Merger's Cup stuff, our fishing group of mates is like eight, maybe nine of us. Yeah. Count some, and pretty much all yeah. of us are in the emergency service, and we all work sort of alternating different shifts. So right. trying to get dates, like we're looking at a date in, in July next year, mm. but we have to plan now so that we yeah. all know when we're off, putting right. leave, some, some people like have to put in leave, whatever, so we'll try and find the best dates. But mm. So it takes a lot of planning and a lot of involved. And yeah. do, do, you, do you find then with your fishing, so for me, I'm, I'm very selfish with my fishing. I'm, I get very fixated on lakes and obsessed. I've got a really obsessive personality. Mm. So for me, like I, when I fish, I want to fish one place, yeah. and then I find it, and I want to fish that on my own because I'm 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 trying to hunt a fish over yeah. going so much. For, I, I get great joy out of that. <laughs> I find it hard then to put my give my time up for. So I love fishing with mates. I'm really looking forward to this evening, but yeah. but I find that balance. I balance myself, and I keep saying it's George like joined a new lake. Yeah. But do you find that your fishing is predominantly social driven? So for you, it's it's a driver yeah. for social activity so as well. Some, there's some of us like Josh was just mentioned. He's he, he won't sit still. If he's not catching, he's up and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas I will, and I've said this, when we do a peg draw, I'll quite happily choose the peg that's closest to the social. Because yes. I want to go and sit and have a beer and a chat. And for me, that it's all about the social. Yeah. Fishing's a backdrop. Mm. It's not. A, I'm not it's an fishing. excuse for an environment. Yeah. yeah exactly. Mm. So, so yeah, some of us are really into our fishing and really go. And I don't. I don't feel I'd ever go fishing on my own. No. Um, that's not for me. See, I uh, love that. Yeah, I've done it a few times. I love the solitude. Yeah. I love, <coughs> you know, last winter. I got on a well, sort of last year. I got on a on a, on a syndicate uh, not too far from me, and um, you know everything in my head. And Nick knew this as soon as I started. She knows that whenever I start something, I am on it. And it was my mission to get a thirty. Right. Mm. And um, you know what? I hit it hard, <laughs> and I was out on my own because it's it's a very small syndicate. There's not many members, so a lot of the time you're there on your own anyway. Yeah. It's a beautiful little place, <clears throat> and. Um, I was just literally nailing it, and I, I got one, and I, and then it was just like a flurry of really big fish after that, and you know it was brilliant. Yeah, but I was it, yeah. so fixated on it, so like that's not working. What am I going to do now? Where am I going to go? What peg? You know, and I was for the best part of yeah, yeah, probably best part of a year. You know, I like the social, but at the same time, if I know a certain fish has been out of a certain area of a certain lake you know will you get yeah, that's I, it that's obviously I'm thinking about that as well and yeah you know. until last op, uh, I'm not yeah last October last year I'd yeah. never been on a social until I found Club Carp right. mm. um, I've been I've been with Club Carp previous to October you know um, I joined up I can't remember what it was sort of earlier in the year I thought oh, I'll give one of these socials a go yeah. and um it's, it's been absolutely fantastic. Mm. I think it definitely changes your outlook on fishing as such. Oh, like, 100%. Once you've been on a social, yeah. to go then on your own is like, you know, you really think, would I bother? Yeah, and the people you <laughs> meet, been out with people. because mm. they're so like-minded, yeah. and, and it's something that I, will, again, will touch on later on, compared to other hobbies, sports, whatever, yeah. um, you know, you, you're, you know that you're there to have a bit of a fish and try yeah. and catch something decent, yeah. but equally... You know, I've made some really good friends within Club Carp, mm. and um, you know, you can talk about anything. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's, you know, you know, why we're here today. Um, I think yeah. it's it's a well, perfect yeah. highlighter of. Uh, well, I think that's well. a perfect time to pour some coffee and uh, get stuck into it. Yeah. So, James, over to right, you to man. get the bruise on. <laughs> I'm freezing. Can I pass that over there? Yeah. No pressure, mate. Uh, You've got one job to do. Yeah. <laughs> nice and strong. Um, no milk for me, thank you. 
I thought you were describing James. <laughs> <laughs> Strong but a little bit milky. <laughs> <laughs> Shelf life of only three days. <laughs> and a half life of one day. I'd only have a half a cup. That looks like rocket fuel. Yeah, it um, I'll have two cups. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to this, our, what I'd class as our December podcast. Uh, uh, we're here for Club Carp and I'm joined today by the uh, Emergency Carpers founders and crew of Jamie and James, of which we will spend today confusing who's Jamie and who's James. Um, and also... <laughs> that will help though our, our listeners today understand that but also uh ed um one of our long-standing club carp members and a great angler and today we really want to uh bring a podcast to talk about a few things for me it's uh, looking at the, the space of the outdoors and fishing from a well-being angle but also to talk about how um how fishing can be a good good escape for those from the emergency services and those within trades uh, we're welcome today and obviously jamie and james will have touch on talk how both from an emergency services as well as ed so i think it, it's a really good topical conversation to join so welcome uh, i hope you're to be here. i hope you're warming up underneath the fire yeah. and uh, the coffee will help but the festive mince pies are what i'm looking forward to the most <laughs> Uh, so to sort of kick things off I think it would be great to understand a little bit about uh, Jamie and James and and Emergency Carpers uh, a great social that we've supported and you guys have supported us as Club Carp Box for the last last year on and off I'd love to find out a little bit about the beginnings of Emergency why why it happened and where where it came from your story no worries yeah so it's like we 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 kind of use fishing as a way of, of escapism I suppose is the best term for it um, you know, I used to fish when I was a kid and then sort of fell out of love of it for one reason or another. Yeah. You know, life gets in the way. Started in the emergency services and seen a lot of things through the years, as, as I'm sure Jamie and Ed can appreciate as well. Um, and just started fishing with these guys, a group of mates just going fishing. I personally have never suffered with um, any, any real severe mental health problems. Mm. And I put that down to the fact that I've got an outlet, I've got a way of doing something, a way of you know getting rid of that pressure um and that for me was fishing um i've always said it doesn't matter what you do if you play tiddly winks or whatever you want to do just do something um and i know i don't know if you're happy to talk but jamie you've had some issues in the past yeah 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 so um it's a really emotive subject yeah. and i apologize if it goes a little bit wayward um yeah it can, it can be hard it can mm-hmm. trigger um but yeah so i in 2016 was um, was going through a particularly bad time. I won't go into the ins and outs yeah. of it, but it was a lot of work related stress mm-hmm. um, that wasn't dealt with at the time. And I was going through um, lots of different relationship problems, um, but everything was all hinged around my mental health. You know, yeah. it was, um, I wasn't doing anything. I was going deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, stopped absolutely everything really um even when i say everything i mean i stopped washing i stopped getting yeah. out i stopped absolutely everything um uh when uh, i was hospitalized for some time um went through many different treatments like cognitive therapy treatment uh emdr treatments mm-hmm. and things like that and was diagnosed with ptsd uh, i was put on medication because i wasn't sleeping i was having nightmares um and stuff like that and, and it's all work related stuff yeah uh, and I was just lower, lowest as, as I could ever be, really. I was really, really bad. Um, was off work, um, and I, I, I sort of say to people about it all the time, I remembered, I was reading a book, and I, it, was a, it was about fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an old, um, uh, Fishing for a Quid, it was called, and it was a, a book from, oh, the late 80s about how you can fish for a pound. You can't imagine it now. Yeah, you know, no and chance. It was, it was all the that you could make. And, and I just started, and it took me back to fishing. Everyone remembers when they first started fishing, mm-hmm. uh, how you was fishing for little fish. And um, I remember that it was reward. So you, you, you sort of planned. Mm. You planned how you was going to, and that was reading your books, making up your, your cheesy bread baits, you know, your fermented cheese and things like that. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, going to the lakes and um, catching fish and smiling. So I, I went out fishing on my own um, and I sat by the lake. I was there for oh, probably, I don't know, 10 days. I sort of just took myself off by a yeah. lake. 
didn't have a bivvy. Just took a rod and I slept in a, uh, I slept in a cradle. Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and it, it it felt great. You know, mm. I was sleeping better than I'd ever slept before. Uh, I was catching fish, um, and then I started looking more into it. And um, and the only thing I could make sense of was, like I said, it was a plan. Um, putting your plan into place and then a reward. Mm. And I think if that if you could structure anything. Um, then you know it's going to work because all the time that you're doing that, your mind is not in control of you as such. Yeah. If that makes sense, it's really hard to explain. Uh, but um, so yeah, bring that forward to to uh, COVID, wouldn't it? Really, just yeah. just before, yeah. like I said, well, just after COVID, you, you, we kind of set up um, the Instagram page was first, wasn't it? Was it the Facebook page? One of the pages, one of the yeah. socials, yeah. Up as, as emergency carper, and just put out the message that you know we're a bunch of fishermen who go fishing. We're all emergency yeah. service. Yeah. We do it. Some of us do it to cope with what we've been through. Some of us do it, yeah. uh, and, and attribute that to not having had mental health problems because of it. Uh, and yeah. it just took off. People yeah, just started did. following us, and we started getting yeah. messages from people. And we thought, you know what, we're onto something here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just from just from then onwards, day to day, we've just been we're sitting up messaging people. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, we had all sorts of people coming through. Uh, uh, that time. I was going to say that was you know some of my questions is is you you touched on there. Jamie, not James. Uh, that that actually one thing around um, how fishing supported you was it because you had a plan, a place to yeah. go, and then a reward at the end. Yeah. And I suppose a question to both of you, and I wonder if you feel this with your community that you've built of emergency services. Do you find that the emergency services sector that can be a struggle because you're dealing with unprepared, you're planning for unprepared scenarios, and yeah. within the fire service as well. So actually, you said that you found a route for to manage your personal well-being and having a purpose to go behind. And everybody, I believe, who works in any form of emergency or public sector has a purpose to, to why they're there. Yeah. Quite often, we probably reflect and go, well, why the hell are we doing this job? But there's something a nine want to, to go there. Yeah. But you touched on there having a, a, a plan, a project, a plan, a focus, and then a reward. Yeah. Do you find when you're speaking to your community that's something that lacks from the emergency services because you're always thinking about unplanned okay. care? Just, just never yeah. know what you're going to go to. Yeah, it, there is an element of that. And yeah, like you, what you, you know, what do you plan for? I mean, I can go in one day to work and sit there, and, and I, you know, there's been times when I've done nothing at all. Mm. There have been times when I've gone in and I've gone to people with a cough or a cold all day long. Uh, or you go from someone with a cough and a cold, or you, you, you know. You've what you perceive to be wasting your time to someone who's been shot, stabbed, or a child who's critically unwell. It's just yeah. you can't plan for it. So it's a massive roller coaster, isn't it? And your emotions yeah. are all over the place. So and also, I think it's. I found myself not planning <coughs> because you go to work and, and it's like, you know, you, you do plan at work and, well, I personally do. And then yeah, you're, you're off. Have a spreadsheet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but then you're off and, and it sounds terrible. And my, my ex wife used to say, you know, I don't when I'm off I didn't particularly want to do anything because I just wanted to not talk to anyone you were burnt out and exhausted you, yeah. you got angry yeah. I've said this before you got really and I remember it you've yeah. been really angry all the time yeah because um, you just I've, I've, yeah I was it's all part of it you know, <laughs> it's, it's not understanding it it's feeling lonely feeling yeah, alone feeling scared yeah. and I think it's just yeah it's that mm. bottling it up and like you say not having a plan of how you're going to deal with it and yeah overcome it so it made you angry but you know thankfully you're, you're through the other end of it now I wasn't angry <laughs> well, not angry <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, the pandemic came um, yeah. incredibly challenging I, I, for everybody on this so far I would have fought within your roles but, but that bred to you creating a, an online community yeah. which from what I gather from my research is a, is a space that um like-minded individuals, career career individuals, either current or past, yeah. can come together and um, talk and share in a community about their experiences around a collective cause, which is fishing. Yeah. Um, I'd really like to understand about some of the socials that you've done and how you've been able to support that. So this year, you've had two two socials. Yeah. Two social, yeah, two socials. They're, they're more some a lot of them with emergency service people, but we, we kind of open it up to anyone because they're more about fundraising yeah for, for us um however i mean you you you've had the it was on the way up you were talking about no, no names but oh yeah yeah so, so yeah just uh, i mean uh, one story that sticks in my mind but yeah. i think sums it up perfectly yeah so set the scene um it's 6 a.m you're on a lake there's mist 
<laughs> and you're dying Sounds to go beautiful. to the toilet. Right? <laughs> Not so beautiful. <laughs> you're dying to go to the toilet. So you're on the way down to the toilet, and another angler who's taking part in the weekend stops you. Can I have a chat? Yeah. Mm. So you're sitting there, and all of a sudden, you've got two, well, what, ten stone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Men sitting there, tears rolling down their face <laughs> because he's telling me a story mm. about how he was a firefighter, or is a firefighter, and he went to a job in a barn. Mm. It was a barn fire, and there were sheep and lambs that, were, similar to this, that so. were on fire. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, he said that he was putting them out, but obviously they, they, they passed away. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they weren't surviving that. And um, he said that on the way back to station, all these, all these, well, you'll know what it's like. All these colleagues were sort of saying, oh, what's for dinner tonight, lamb, this, yeah. that, and the other. Um, and he stopped the vehicle, got out and walked off. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, I think what I got from that was that for, for me mm -hmm. and for, for, for you, you know, everyone sees that different, but to him at that point in time, that, that broke him, you know, yeah. that really did. <laughs> and two men sitting there, sharing stories and I remember texting him two days later start thanking him really for yeah. telling me yeah. um, he's supported our charity ever he's since. been to every event since um, and, and yeah it's just like you say it's that open it's that safe space to be able to have them conversations yeah. Yeah. because let's be honest as well men typically don't talk about that sort of stuff you Never. Know, anything yeah. that upsets them you'll know Ed um, but yeah that's for me that really was was a victory, you know. It was that we could have them sort and of that's conversations. Just, that's just one of, of many, isn't it? and we took yeah, of course. We took um, Mr. Uh, uh, the valeting guy. I don't want to, again. I don't yeah, want to get yeah, into yeah. names, but we, we took a guy out. Not he wasn't part of the social, but we took him along with us to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Never been fishing in his life. Yeah. Now he never he didn't really get into the fishing, but he he took on board the whole outside green yeah. you know green exercise stuff, uh, and he now does. A lot of wild camping and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that on the back of it to help with his mental health. So, you know, that was a massive, that was a big success. Yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah with definitely. Just yeah. educating people that you know, it's okay to talk. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. And it's also sometimes okay to not talk if you want to, but you've got to find an outlet. Yeah, you're right. And I suppose a question which I open up to Ed as well is, is um, say my personal experience um, talking to friends is very difficult when you've had a bar day talking to loved ones family um personally i had a breakdown when in, i was in my mid-20s and it transformed my life it was one of the worst but best situations that ever happened to me and i wouldn't be the person i was today because it taught me how to communicate with somebody um and and how to share my problems and i will always recall walking into the pubs and talking to my mates again you're right no and this, this is why yeah. and it's really bloody hard yeah. for all of us to talk mm -hmm. um, you, and I think one thing that you don't you get in fishing and I'm keen to see if this is your views is when you go to a pub you sit down you have a beer you're like yeah oh, tough week let's watch the football Yeah. you go fishing actually by the time you set your rods up set that ad something to eat you almost go well what the hell am I going to do for the next seven hours <laughs> Well, I better start talking, yeah. and actually, you can create an environment <laughs> through Almost through forced. that. Mm. And 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 I, I suppose this open to maybe you, Ed, where you can come in and, and and certainly yourselves is is how do you find fishing has enabled you to open up in dynamics which are quite new to you? <clears throat> I think for me, it's um, yeah, I've made some great friends, especially in club carp, but it's it's you 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 have that sort of common ground with the fishing to start with. And then you feel that you can open up to certain people, you know, like I say, I've made some great friends and, you know, I, I feel like I could talk to anyone within Club Car about mm -hmm. anything um, where work colleagues I don't even have that with, do you know what I mean? Because you're sort yeah. of living in each other's pockets all the time, you're dealing with each other's um, things that are going on at home and stuff like that when you're at work, because you do, you, you yeah. know, it's like a, a little family anyway. Yeah. Um, but I feel it's just a, a bit more of a step away from that, but you can you can talk to people and you know and, and then there's other people oh yeah well i'd have that you know yeah. it's such a similar you know experiences and not everyone's suffered with you know mental health or poor mental mm. health which is great but you know i have um and it and it and it's definitely definitely helped um i certainly wouldn't stop going fishing on my own because i find that yeah. in itself the solitude the, you know that just the tranquil setting um, just being focused on something other than work or whatever else mm. is going on, 
um, for that 24, 48, 72 hour period is brilliant. Mm. You know, it's, it does does your head so much good. Mm. Um, better than anything else I've found. Um, I was heavily um, into um, triathlon at one stage, which is a massively <coughs> selfish sport. And this is, <clears throat> I think this is where I buried a lot of my um, problems um, that managed to last for so long um, because I was training sort of twice a day or every day at least five six days a week and you just you just lose yourself in that and it's not good because you're training but you're not really getting rid of your thoughts where with fishing it's much more relaxed and mm. um, it's no stress you know and it's yeah it's much, much it just better. gives you the time that's, I mean, uh, absolutely that's yeah that's to, to process things yeah, yeah. And, and yeah processing was what I failed on yeah. Or didn't understand. You used to do the same during your triathlon, didn't you? That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. Well, fishing is a sport. I, I, yeah, I continue sure. to it protest is. Yes, yeah, today. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. sport, but has a different output, I think, as you touched on. You don't have that physical endurance. Personally, walking around to the swim is enough for yeah. me sometimes, <laughs> as, as it is. So... Um, just bringing back to emergency carpers talk to us a little bit about you, you mentioned there that you're, fun, you're you're creating events to fundraise to support the community that you're building talk to us about a little bit about what your goals and aims are uh with with, with the community of emergency carpers yeah so so let's where we start so j let's just i put these questions do you know how many people in the uk is there how many people in how many suffer with mental health in the uk every year a lot. i guess a lot yeah, it's yeah. one in four. Is it? One in four people every year. So it's quite a lot. Um, how many of that? What as a percentage? How many of those get any kind of mental health treatment? Do you think? Ten percent. Yeah, it's a little bit more. It's forty percent, but it's still not great. Mm. So sixty percent of people don't get any kind of treatment. Some of that could be pride, where they don't want to speak up. You know, yeah. men are the worst for it. We don't let like speak up. So I get that. But there's also a massive amount of underfunding. Um, for the NHS as a whole, generally, yeah. uh, and mental health is kind of a kind of washed over. It's got a sort of it's the you know it's buried under the carpet a little bit and forgotten about. Yeah. Um, so they've done and and they've done. I might be jumping ahead, but they've done lots of studies going back. If you do, I mean, if you if you're sad like me and want to look at research and stuff, which I do, I'm like I say, I'm sad. Yeah. But you know, going back to sort of 2000, there've been loads and loads of research and studies about the, the, the importance of outdoor pursuits uh, and what they call green exercise yeah. for mental health. Um, and then there's a massive study going on at the minute. Back in, I think it was 2014, a company called ICARP took 14 people away and they, yes. they, they were the first people to properly just do it about fishing and they psychoanalyzed them before, during and after a trip for three years after. And the results were staggering. And on the back of that, it started to get sort of social prescribing models coming through. Mm. That's where we want to be. That's yeah. what we want to do. We want to kind of get to the point where we're getting social prescribing from the NHS. So yeah. you can go to your doctor and say, I'm really struggling with this. And they say, okay, have you thought about outdoor pursuits? We've got fishing, we've got this, we've got this chariot, you yeah. know, emergency carper, they'll take you away. Um, and the idea would be take people away. Yeah. Not even so much the carp fishing, because that can be really, really daunting. Yeah. Um, just, you know, a little float rod, um, we all know how expensive it is. You know, Jamie yeah. mentioned about fishing for a quid. <laughs> Wouldn't we love to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, but as a, as a new person, especially yeah. when you're in the depths of of PTSD, mm. daunting the idea of I've got to find this money to buy a rod. I've got to find this money to do this. What's a what's a half blood knot? What's the? It's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. The idea is we take them, take all the stress out of it, and just give them a little bit of a day. And and in the future, I mean, this is a long way off, but. Ideally, the, the idea would be we'd take them away for, you know, three, four days yeah. of fishing and then send them away with a little kit. It's a startup Fantastic. kit to get you going and, 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 you know, come back and see us. And then out of that, we'll breed that they might want to volunteer with us and, yeah. and, and stay in touch and, and, and go forward. Um, so that's the big picture, the view. Mm. Yeah, building community. And mm. as I touched on earlier, plan, put it into place, yeah. reward. Yeah. If we can project that on you know if we can get people doing that then straight away they're going to feel better about it yeah. you know your mind's not in control you're in control of that situation and if you want to be happy you want to be positive you can be yeah. you know that's what we're trying to get across yeah definitely yeah fantastic and and i think from my experience of working in the non-profit sector 
uh, and within mental health it's very challenging and, and you touched on there trying to build that community and purpose um how, how do you think emergency carpers or the carp fishing industry as a whole uh, could really support the drive of mental health we've seen historically some of the brands quarter had, had associated themselves with several years ago probably was before the pandemic a, a, a similar model of supporting people but how do you think carp fishing as a whole can make a stand towards mental health what what would you recommend see that's, that's a tough question really just just a, just a raising awareness of it is yeah. one of the biggest things you know using the, some of the big companies like calder and stuff um put aside profit for the time being yeah um uh, and just raise awareness using what you've got available so your publicity channels that sort of stuff to get yeah. the message out yeah. there that that you're not alone you know help is out there if you need it yeah um and like like we keep saying men are the worst but just it's okay to talk about yeah. it yeah it takes a big man yeah, to, gotcha. to you know it's very very easy to, to say that. if someone yeah. says to you are you okay we had a big drive at work didn't we are you okay it was yeah. a big thing at work it's very easy to just go yeah i'm all right yeah yeah, yeah of course I'm yeah I'm fine. Right, uh, yeah. yeah yeah don't worry about that you know my, i'm not paying my mortgage because i can't afford it because you know paid terribly or yeah i've just you know i've just seen some horrific accident with oh, yeah, i'm okay it's all right because you don't want to talk about it i don't know it's almost like and it's getting better there's this yeah. stigma around mental health isn't there? So it's just raising awareness i i think you're right and i think the stigma is is really being attacked um quite hard i think over the last couple of years not good not we're not there today but the stigma of yeah. of mental health um i think one thing that really supports that is probably the corporate sector as a whole really starting to drive energy behind well-being uh, one of my questions is is have you noticed a shift from the pandemic so you touched on within emergency services and perhaps you could share some reflections individually from the two sectors that you're from emergency incredibly hard environment yeah. it took every country but our country it, it stopped still yeah. something i was listening to a podcast on the way down unrelated to mental health more about financial services but um it was something you can never plan and prepare for you touched on earlier a plan yeah. of preparation puts something <clears throat> into place the world stopped yeah but the only people that didn't stop was the emergency services to support the pandemic yeah. one thing i noticed within my environment of work is um how we talk and how we communicate with people has changed completely from pre-pandemic you touched on before you kind of suck it up you get on with work the environment of 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 companies was you're here to work you work five days a week in office, you work five days, you, you work your rotors, you get it done. Yeah. The world is shifting ever so slightly towards actually the people as, as a whole have a voice. Some of that is incentivized. Um, some of it is is pushed through desperation. But I'm really keen to understand from the emergency services perspective how you managed to handle the pandemic, but also how it's helped you within emergency carpers and the foundation to support people post-pandemic who are more willing to open up today. I think during, during the pandemic, it was just you just had to get on with it. Yeah, it, it sounds sounds a bit harsh, but it was and it was there was a lot of that, wasn't there? You know, we didn't have the right equipment, we didn't have the correct PP, we didn't have. But it, you, you couldn't complain is the wrong word, but you couldn't complain about. It. You couldn't say anything. If you did say anything, it's like okay, look, we've got what we've got. You just got to get on yeah. with it. And so in that moment, um, as it always inevitably is, is fine. It's the bit. It's the after bit. Yeah. Once everything calms down, and then you start thinking about what's going on I mean I remember I remember in two weeks I did um, 26 cardiac arrests in two weeks because due to Covid um, which is more than I did the year before spent more time in a in a Tyvek suit than I did in a uniform it was it was just a dynamic it was just forever changing wasn't it everything was changing all the time but but, but like hour by hour (laughs) it wasn't even day by day it was hour by hour things were changing especially from a medical point of view so yeah, once you're in, once you when you're in it, you just kind of just kind of got on with it, yeah. and in the back of your mind, it was always like you know, almost like a battlefield triage. Yeah, just doing the most you can for the most yeah. amount of people, deciding who would get who, who would get a ventilator and, and stuff how many like times, that. And I don't know about you, but how many times did you drive a loved one off in the back of an ambulance, yeah. knowing they're not going to survive and having to say the family, yeah. you, you can't come. You've so, got to say yeah. That. So I don't. So it's still, I've not processed it fully. No. I don't think right. anyone has um, really. The start of emergency carper and things like that was was just sort of me throwing myself into something because COVID was I couldn't I couldn't process it. We lost we lost colleagues. Yeah. You know, it was it was a it was a tricky time that I don't know 
how hard it was because like I say I, I, I was doing it. daily I was doing daily videos wasn't I yeah, I put yeah. on my own personal yeah. um, uh, YouTube channel I was going through my divorce literally my wife had left me on the 29th of January and we went into lockdown yeah. you know four weeks later so I threw myself into lots of things I was at the Nightingale I worked there for, yeah. for quite a bit as well um, and it was yeah I, I still can't process it and I'm and I've just sort of jumped into that and I've lost my train of thought completely because no. I've jumped into that. I don't know if that happens to you, Ed, when you throw your head into something and you forgot where you was. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really, really it's difficult. Oh, that's what, that was it, sorry. I'd, I went out on a, on a job. I'd done an ambulance shift <coughs> probably about three weeks ago. Yeah. And I went to a, a young lady's house. Um, uh, she was upstairs in a bedroom and... There was pictures everywhere mm. of of um, her loved one, uh, and she. We needed to take the take her to hospital, but she was so scared because the last time she saw someone go to hospital was her daughter. Right. And we're in the back of an ambulance now, and she's absolutely broken, yeah. telling me her story about her daughter, and that brought back COVID again because for us we. We knew that we was taking that person away yeah. to hospital and that they probably wouldn't come back and that we would say to the loved one, do you want to give them a kiss goodbye? Knowing what it's, it was. It's yeah. the last time they're going to see them alive. So yeah, it's constant reminders, yeah. a lot. And mm. how, do, how do we, the, sorry, the original question was how, yeah. do, how do people open up? Was that yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I, for me, I've seen... Um, people being more willing to talk post-pandemic make yeah. a stand and Sorry. say this isn't right and we yeah. see this in all of today's world yeah, yeah, without yeah. getting into politics yeah. but so in the, in the terms of from the ambulance service yeah. i mean whether it's lip service whether it's fake you know i don't know but they, they've they've put in a lot of welfare services for staff haven't they since, yeah, since huge pandemic amount. we've got a whole we never used to we've got a whole welfare department now where they even little things like they will come to because different to the fire brigade we don't get any time to do anything other than go to hospital <laughs> <laughs> so but you're constantly you're at hospital yeah. another patient back to hospital another patient back to hospital so they've got we call them the tea buses they're called welfare trucks officially yeah. but they literally just come around and they've got bags of crisp chocolate cups of tea yeah and you can just have a cup of tea and a five minute chin mate. you know and the people on it are trained to ask that question not just are you okay but what if someone says no what, then what? Then what? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they're trained. They've got a very limited training. They've got a bit of training, and we've then got referral pathways for counselling and whatever else. So mm. yeah, on the back of the pandemic, I think it's made the they've the ambulance more. service yeah more open to the fact that actually we need to look after our staff because they're our greatest yeah. asset. For yeah. sure. So yeah. um, whether it's enough, that's another story for a different yeah. day. I think. But they're getting there. Yeah. Just yeah. something I was going to touch on there. It's funny, like. I joined the retained, you know, which I'm I'm not in now, but back in '98, and um, I remember my first fatal, right. and um, yeah, I was only <coughs> eight, just 18, sort of thing, wow. um, and it was it was Christmas Eve, and I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, but we got back, and they were like, right, yeah, and it was quite a graphic one, mm. uh, shall we say, um, and um, I didn't really know how to deal with it. And um, there wasn't like diffusing as such back then. No. Um, things like that. So we got, I remember we got back and the station officer at the time, he, he a good old boy, um, he said, oh, let's go down the pub then. So I remember sitting there with a pint thinking, this is a bit weird. Well, it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> I just spent most of the morning from about five o'clock, yeah. sat on the 303, staring at, a, you know, yeah. you know, something that wasn't very nice. Yeah. And now I'm having a pint in the pub. Is this how it works? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh. And um, I remember him saying, how's that, all right? Yeah. And he went, you'll be all right. That, and that was it. That was it. Yeah. And we, and, you know, we, we spoke about it, but it's a weird thing is the emergency services. Um, get, touching back on, on the guy with the, with the sheep, you know, mm. um, we, we all have a bit of banter about stuff because that's how we deal with it. Mm. And I think if you're in emergency services, everyone, you know, if yeah. they're honest, will say, because, yeah, because you've just got a, it's yeah. the job and that's yeah. just how it is. Yeah. Um, but if it was somebody from the outside, they'd be like, 
Oh, <laughs> What's going on here? Because this is not right. <laughs> but it's just yeah. the way it was. But yeah. I think yeah. now, you know, there are a lot more supportive services. Certainly, yeah. I know there was within the fire service because they helped me. Yeah. Um, I know there is within within the ambulance service yeah. now. Um, the police, you know. So yeah. I think it is a much bigger thing now because they have they have yeah. to be. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Desensitised. You say about yeah. desensitising. If people want to hear some of our conversations oh, at times, they'll oh, think we're awful. It's gallows. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah but you, sometimes you have to uh, humorise a scenario yeah. just to get it through. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's definitely. what I can hear you collectively saying in, within your trades is that there are times where we just have to yeah. make a joke yeah. to just process what we've just witnessed, yeah. felt, heard, seen, yeah. touched. Yeah. And there's and no there's no disrespect on anybody, no, you know, within no. what's happened. It's just, just it's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's hard to explain, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think yeah. I think Ed, that's a really good point for us to find out a little bit more about you and your backgrounds. Um, how how you've kind of come towards Club Carp. I, I can remember we spoke a few, probably about a year ago, uh, uh, before the first social that I got to go on with yourself at at, at, at Norton Disney. Yeah, yeah, and it was a really good conversation before we then uh, met up face to face. But but tell us a little bit about your background and and fishing today. Um, so yeah, um, I started fishing years ago with my dad, um, and then kind of lost. Um, lost love with it a little bit as you do as you sort of get into your teens um, and yeah. my dad used to run it was with match fishing so he used to run matches when we lived up in Yorkshire um, then we moved down and uh, I kind of carried on a little bit and then sort of fell out of love, love with fishing and then got back into carp fishing again quite a number of years later um, sort of late teens um, and then you know life happens you get married you know, have kids and what have you um, so I again gave it up, came back into carp fishing um, and really got into the sort of the carp side of things as opposed to just sitting there with a float um, and um, yeah and then my life completely turned upside down um, back in 2003 um, I lost my <coughs> I lost my nan um, and my nan wasn't just my nan mm. she was my best friend she mm. was everything she was a third parent um she raised me a lot because my mum and dad were working my dad was in the ambulance service uh, mum was a nurse and um <coughs> so it was really really hard for me to process you know that she'd gone um and i never really got over it but i buried myself in other things um such as triathlon so for a long time i you know it was eating away at me um, and then another family member um, got really ill and I knew we we're going back to the, the Kobe thing where you're saying the sort of the last goodbyes you know and that sort of thing I knew what was coming because of what they had I knew what was coming and I was the sort of person that would avoid funerals and everything just to not remind me of my nan there was no way I could talk to you about her like I am now without yeah. crying mm. and, I, and I knew that that was a problem but it, it was okay I've kind of dealt with it so for 10 years I've dealt with that uh. or didn't deal with it and it ate me up and one day at work um there was you know so this other family member was really really poorly there was a lot of stuff going on uh, with relationship wise and i absolutely lost it at work um and i remember exactly what happened i had a bit of a tate tate with my boss which was really kind of unlike me i remember smashing a ruler on the desk um, and then everything from then was a, just a bit of a blur for two or three months. And mm. um, the fire service, they were good as gold. Like they really offered me a lot of help. I had six months, um, pretty much CBT, yeah. most of it. Um, and I'll never forget, you know, the first, um, the first session, was, it was an hour long session. And I, I went and met this lady and I didn't really talk to people like that before, but I, she didn't know me. She didn't know my story. And she sat there and she listened and I was literally just spurting everything off that was going on in my life. And it was like, where did even that come from? You know? And she mm -hmm. was like, well, we've got some issues here yeah. that we need to sort out. So yeah, that's where it all started sort of going <coughs> wrong. And I went downhill big style, even from having the first lot of counseling, but started picking myself up. Yeah. Um, it didn't help with divorce um, 
you know that's another thing in itself it's a horrific thing to go through um and so i had to find an outlet um and a really good friend of mine james um and my dad was like you gotta get back out fishing again you gotta get back out fishing again and i got back out fishing with my dad um because i had to sell all my stuff um to you because know, it got divorced yeah. money was tight so i sort of mm. slowly started buying stuff up really back into the carp fishing was loving it it was really helping um you know get through things and um and then i was just like perusing through uh the the socials one day and i came across club carp I was like, oh, what's this all about then because you know i've, I've never really been into a, a, a club like that mm. you know i thought oh blimey you know i was really it was quite daunting to yeah, be fair course, course, yeah um yeah. because like you think you're a bit of a nod you know you you're not mm. that great at fishing and i wasn't and i've learned so much since you know certainly with george and, and and jack and and even other guys from club carp um so i thought well I'll join this up this looks good and you get your subscription box which is absolutely fantastic yeah, every month yeah. um you know I obviously found out about you guys through yeah. through club carp because of the the flyers that you put in the box and um I was like, oh, this is this is pretty good, and it, it was a little while before I see that they did the socials, but it was a little while before I sort of plucked up the courage to sort of uh, let's go on one and see how we get on. So um, I remember signing up to Norton Disney, and um, I was like, God, this is a big, you know, big water. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, for me, it was like the mecca because I'm a bit of a Corder fan and a bit of a Danny fan. <laughs> 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 and, Many um, of us are. Uh, you know, Rob Burgess as well. He's like. Yeah, for me, Rob Burgess is he's a great angler yeah. um, and knows his stuff, and I've followed him <coughs> for, for quite a long time. Um, so yeah, so I went along to the first yeah. uh, first one back. Was that year? year Mid October, October last yeah. year was it? Yeah, yeah. and um, ever since like meeting everyone, and it's just like a little family, you know. Yeah. I don't want to sound cliche about that, no, but it's it's it genuinely is, you know. And, as I said, I've made some really, really good friends. Yeah. Um, the advice, not just from, it, it's not just about fishing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes we can have a bit of a moan, you know, <coughs> we have a, a group um, and, you know, we talk about other stuff. But, you know, the help that the Club Carp had given me yeah. um, to, to sort of get my angling to the next level and to, you know, um, just to be that little bit better yeah. um has, has, has been fantastic um but it's it's getting away with them like this weekend i can't wait you know I've, i was saying earlier you know i've just moved house and everything's all upside down uh -huh. but it's nice to get away see certainly yeah. see jack because we've not seen jack for a long time always nice to see george and you know and everyone else um so <coughs> yeah it's just a, a fantastic yeah. thing to it's be involved with community integration as well yeah. Yeah. yeah and they're all like-minded people you know we're all, we're all there yeah. for the fishing and we all love talking about fishing yeah. but it's community yeah it's yeah. plan yeah deploy yeah. reward yeah. exactly yeah, definitely That's exactly yeah. and yeah, i think I mean, you've, you've just touched on the whole i always I always make the analogy of a, like a pressure cooker you know you let everything build up mm. so yeah you I don't guess. have that release yeah. that's what fishing is that release get rid of that pressure and do you think it's um you know for me i i love the outdoors as a whole for me the the biggest reward from fishing is actually watching a sunrise there's something for me about massive watching a sunrise knowing that everybody else is not watching this sunrise and i feel like i've started the day in the best way mm. we always before we go to bed don't we we always yeah. look on your phone sunrise. what time sunrise sunrise yeah. is at six right half five up one of us, like you're doing a coffee in the morning, everyone's up at half five, yeah. coffee's done, and you stand there and it's a fresh start. Watch the day. It's a fresh start of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's certainly one thing I've learned from going on the socials, which I've applied to my like my own fishing. Mm -hmm. And I remember I did it last last winter. Um, is how much you miss if you're really on a target, if you, you're really planning for something, you target fish or whatever, mm -hmm. how much you miss in the night when you're asleep. Mm -hmm. You can sleep in the day. And yeah. that's the joy about fishing. You're like, you don't have to, you don't have to be up. No. You know, if, if you're going to, you know, and, and there was, I remember at Sandhurst um, <coughs> back, um, when was it, June? I think it was yeah. Yeah, about June this year. Yeah. I remember thinking, right, I am on it here and I'm, you know, I'm going to get oh. some fish here. And um, I stayed up most of the night yeah. one night just to, just to spot every two or three hours but it was too nice the weather was lovely it was quite warm yeah. it was too nice to be like be asleep as such yeah, yeah. um so i sort of was up every two or three hours 
couple of spawns out, yeah. sit there for a bit, maybe have a cup of tea, go back to sleep for a bit. Yeah, sure. And then to see the sun come up, you know, and um, obviously I did all right there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very, very well. Maybe George will overlay a uh, lovely fish. But I wouldn't bought. have had that opportunity, I don't think. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone to Sandhurst. I wouldn't have gone to Norton Disney no. off my own back yeah. straight away. Now, I would happily go to any of the places we've been on my own because mm. I think if you're just getting back into it or you've not experienced those sort of waters, it's um, yeah, a bit daunting, yeah, course, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially Sanders, it was weedy as hell. It was the weediest I've ever fished it, oh. you know, or fished in. Um, Lovely. And I learned, I learned so much from, yeah. from, just, from just that. And I wouldn't have, I, I, you know, it wouldn't even phase me now. I know what I'd need to do. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just the opportunities that they've given me. It's yeah, fantastic. You touched on um, through a social environment, a community, uh, fishing together, but also getting an opportunity to talk to like-minded people really helps um, you as individuals. Certainly helps me as well in regards to managing and processing and finding an environment to communicate openly about about your experiences around the collective cause of fishing. Um, how have you found uh I'm kind of keen to get all of your views on this um talking to colleagues in your services who have never heard of fishing i mean even yesterday when i was at work i said oh i'm off fishing for the weekend uh, as one of my big passion with with cold cart mm-hmm. colleagues are like you what you're mad you're yeah. mad you get outside don't get me wrong i generally think we're mad based on the weather yeah. we've got today yeah. <laughs> uh, and i haven't been for it yeah but but how have you found that um, within the areas and the pressure cookers of environments that you work in sharing and trying to encourage people not to necessarily take up fishing but recognize the outdoors as a place mm. for you to uh, digest and and release some of it's that just, pen yeah, it's hard it's a culture change isn't it? yeah and it, and it, it takes time and that's the only yeah, and the only way the only way you're going to do that is with results really just to yeah. you know, show yeah. people results but yeah we get yeah. it all the time yeah I spoke to I mean to be fair I spoke to quite a few people at work and sort of said about the charity and stuff like that and it's normally the people you wouldn't expect mm. yeah. that goes oh well, that's really interesting mm. you know a lot of women at work yeah. yes um, yeah. who say oh well, that's really interesting you know I've mm. never thought about fishing um, yeah and we've had guys that have gone We've had one gentleman that started up his own uh, charity with um, outdoor camping and bushcraft yeah. um, off the back of sort of just a, awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, another uh, colleague started photography. He does outdoor photography uh, and things like that. So he's, he started his own uh, charity page. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just about awareness. But it, it will take, you know, it'll take a bit of time. It just takes so. time. And I think, like, I think yeah. we kind of spread the word and people, you get that. Not, I wouldn't say negatives. They're just not not educated enough like they don't know enough about it they just think oh, it's fishing mm. it's, you know, yeah. fish are cold and slimy and horrible and yeah and do, do they get hurt touch. when you put a hook in them out yeah. and like what do you yeah. mean yeah. what cool. do you mean you put them back yeah like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you try, and then you try to educate them and like i've got i mean we've probably all got it i must have twenty thousand pictures on my phone and yeah. i'm always saying it, no, none no, of them are fish yeah please don't <laughs> <laughs> you show them like you know look this is a fish, I call. wow, that's a big fish, yeah, I know. Yeah. But then look, I was cooking this, we cooked a roast lamb, didn't we? We yeah. went Easter one time, we cooked a whole leg of lamb. Okay, okay. come fishing with roasting. you guys, I think. <laughs> yeah. And, this, and that's what I'm saying, that's what it's about, it's about, and saying to them, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be fishing, you know, yeah. but just get out there, experience life. Yeah. I don't think the guys that I work with really got it when I, because mm. they obviously know me a long, long time, and obviously knew me when I was doing my triathlon and other stuff. <clears throat> and then me getting back into my fishing is when they didn't really know me from from that sort of thing so they don't know initially they didn't know what it meant to me oh ed's got another hobby you know <laughs> okay. um but they know what it means to me then <clears throat> none of them are interested in it really yeah. you know and i get that everyone to their own you know it's all a, they're all about the football and and or whatever you know it doesn't matter what they're into yeah. um but they know what it, they know what it means to me um yeah. and i think that's <coughs> I think that's just as important because you know they they respect that like I know what their football means to them yeah. you know um, but yeah it, it, it's one of those it's one of those things I'd, I'd love to take a couple of them because I think there's a couple of yeah. them there that would enjoy it. Yeah. actually really enjoy it and it'd be like yeah you know what actually I can see why couldn't yeah. do it all the time yeah. or whatever no, no, but no. I can see yeah. really why you enjoy it so much oh. um, it, it, it's a really interesting yeah it's the same for me I've got colleagues who are just 
Jerry, it's like almost mind blown. What do you mean you caught that size of that fish? I didn't even know there was a fish that was that big. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's what such tank a, does that go in? Exactly. <laughs> it's such a. Uh, it's why it's, it's such a widely uh, received sport yeah. activity, social interaction. Yeah. It's also in its infancy in regards to wider knowledge base across the whole of the public space and interests. We don't treat fishing the same as golf. Yeah, everybody wants to go golfing, go for the day, and it's much easier to manage potentially. Yeah, it's a good walk. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a walk wasted, but that's because I'm probably technically not adept at, fi- at golf. Um, so I, I think it's it, it, it has a lot to offer, and is obviously we've seen the growth of fishing through the pandemic. It was one of the things yeah. you could do to get outside. Yeah, um, and I think that's positive positively uh, impacted the sector of fishing but also us as our awareness and understanding of fishing as well because there are so many new people coming to this space with different lived experiences i think we all touched on uh, we we fished as children uh, we did a bit we dropped it we did a bit we dro- and then you kind of found your way into it but one thing you see i think uh, certainly over the last two three years is is adults okay i'm gonna have a go at this and then realizing the rewards that come with it yeah. And I think we always see your colleagues and friends or social media. We see these kind of people come rapidly become obsessed with it. And I suppose one of the questions I had for yourselves was um, social media is a fantastic tool to support a cause, a charity, a message, a brand. Um, But it also can be quite a challenging environment. Um, myself you find yourself motivated or fixated if you're obsessive about it you start finding actually i want to have a look at fish and such an addictive sport in regards to the motive what i think social media has so many positives but also so many challenges how do you think uh it is today impacting perhaps the community of fishing and do you think there's things that we can do as individuals or as a charity and as a business of Club Carp, or in, it's, it's what, what do you think there's more we can do to recognize and speak openly about the impact of social media? And from your perspective, have you seen any examples within your emergency yeah. services? Yeah, a lot of, we've had a lot of people, especially in the early days, a lot of people saying, oh, I love what you do, I can give you this, or I can do that, and I've got this for you, and I've got this. And I mean, one bloke was going to make us something, I can't remember, it was 3D printed this, and mm-hmm. give it to the nothing ever comes of it. And you, you kind of take, kind of learn early on didn't we to just take things with a pinch yeah. of salt you know? yeah um and we don't chase followers either i mean no, we no, have no, four no. and a half thousand followers well, not, not, not because natural growth yeah, yeah and not about the followers we've got are all interested in what we do yeah, yeah. we don't yeah. have bots on there we don't have people yeah. that are not interested no. um but then on the back of that i mean saying that we've had quite early on we had a guy message saying i'm really interested in what you're doing i think it's fantastic i'm a successful businessman I want to I want to fund you or I want to support you as much as yeah. I can and I, I said to you like it's another chance huh? but he wanted to ring me I had a phone call with him and since that day every month he gives us a little bit of money not loads yeah well, a fair play um, and he's paid for our website and fantastic and he, he asked for nothing no. in return does he no. not a single thing no every time we have a social always message him say there's a ticket there for you come along he's never been really just doesn't oh. yeah I mean he, just because he's busy I think he would if he yeah. wasn't busy but so yeah. Yeah. the positives are there yeah but you've got to weed through and you've got to trawl mm. through all of the negatives and yeah. yeah people who seem to want something from you as well but if i do this can you do that <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah and then you get some of the other ones you go oh, i'll send you a picture of my whatever yeah <laughs> you know the ones i mean what's that <laughs> girls on there was, was oh i love I was, yeah off topic but i Can't love be. i love going back with him what was that one i had the other night oh there was a someone had set a, sent a picture in a bath Oh, wow. uh, and, I, and I just replied, um, you know, you're lucky. You, I always get the tap end, <laughs> <laughs> and then proceeded to get in the bath and take a selfie and the tap end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I think but, so, yeah. social media is really great to to, to reach out to yeah, the, oh, definitely to the community. And yeah. we've met some we've met some people people you wouldn't normally have any contact with. I mean, Club Carp George, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, you quite you chat to Jay quite a lot, didn't you, Jay Mungo? Yep. Yeah. Um, Dave Levy, you know, and, and, and it's mm. not that I'm going to say we're friends with these, but you know, we chat to them and they chat to us, and 
it builds that awareness. awareness you know? Yeah, it, it breaks down barriers, and certainly, I think in the fishing industry, you see uh, the influence, the celebrities. I don't want to use the word influencers actually, because they are to us growing up. Mm. Um, you think as children and the books that we read and some of the anglers of the past yep. but actually as you move into an environment what you see is 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 uh, social media has created a space to break down barriers to access um our celebrities yeah. and the ability to communicate and talk to them and and i i uh, have heard from friends that that actually they've had a response and that response has mean everything yeah. um yeah. some of you love and some of you hate <coughs> but but also at the same time i think which is wonderful and i think they can they're doing a lot to really open up the space and be open and talk yeah. about it but I also see a challenging community behind social media as well, which is pressure, yeah. pressure of fishing. Yeah. Um, you see, you know, people get stuck into this. Oh, I've got to build a, a base. It's one, one of the only sports which I've witnessed in my life where everybody's trying to be professional. Yeah. But when you speak to a professional, it's a very challenging, life-changing environment, which I believe you would all understand from, <clears throat> from your emergency services. But everybody's you touch on trying to chase something for someone. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it can make it a challenging space for anglers to to understand what's genuine. Yeah, and what, what, yeah what's massively. I, I I was just about to touch on social media because <coughs> there was a time where I nearly came off social media altogether. You know, we had, had the odd Facebook break, but it, 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 social media is, can be a, an evil, evil place. Mm. And if you're already suffering with mental health or problems, you know, mm. whatever, um, it compounds it massively. Yeah. Um, because even in off on your own page, oh, they haven't liked my post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And if you're in that mindset yeah. at that time, you know, you think, well, spiral, yeah. up yours then. You yeah. know, yeah. and it can spiral. And then you see sort of trolling, you know, posts and mm. the, the nastiness on social media. Mm. But I think it is getting a lot better. Um, but these positive impact things, yes. like yourselves, um, like Club Car. Um, you know, it's it's getting better, and, and you're seeing less of that. You know, I prefer Instagram over Facebook because Instagram yeah. always tailors stuff. You yeah. know, if it, if it knows you're into fishing, it'll so, tailor yeah. it more than yeah, yeah, yeah. than yeah. you know yeah, Facebook does. Um, but yeah, it's a um, funny old thing is social media. It is. Yeah. And one thing I've learned as well um, is that you know you'd see these great ang Rob Burgess, you know, uh -huh. and it's not until speaking to them, like Jack yeah. said how much work they've gone you know uh -huh. they'll do oh, this yeah. video they'll do this film but they were there for like three or four days yeah. to get two decent fish yeah. and to get the right film and to get yeah. this and that and the other but when you come into it that's all you see yeah. and that's great you know fair play to yeah, them yeah, yeah. but you appreciate then how much work has actually gone into that how much bait's gone into that how much yeah. time you know it's yeah. um yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a funny no, old thing. There needs to be a more positive injection into anger. Yeah. Yeah. What I say, don't know, smile. Mm. If, if anyone's looked at any of our pictures on, on any of the social medias, I've always got a massive smile yeah. whenever I'm holding a fish, right? Smile as if it was the first time you caught a fish and you'll never look back. Yeah. And I'll say that to everyone, you know. Yeah. Be positive about it. I'm positive about everyone's catches. You know, I remember when you you had your you know uh, sand down when you had your uh, uh, the, the oh, armadillo, yeah. didn't you? And, yeah, yeah. and I messaged you straight you did, away. Yeah, you know, yeah, well done, yeah. great yeah. effort. You know, yeah. just be happy for everyone else. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, yeah, and that's, that's that. You know, I think you know it can sometimes get a little bit like oh, you bloody caught again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it can well, get luck. like that. Good luck. Yeah, but yeah. fair play to them. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And I, See, I've seen lot. some great captures within the club <laughs> I cup. Get a lot of people saying, oh, you blanked again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you were fishing? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I suppose uh, I've only got a few more questions. Um, I've got a question. Yeah, Can please. I go to the toilet? Well, hopefully <laughs> imminently. We're we'll, oh, we'll okay. looking to close close <laughs> things up. But but for me, is is um, how can people find out and where can they find out about Emergency Carpers and the community that you're delivering? So, yeah, social media is a great start. Um, Facebook, Instagram, website. Uh, and TikTok and now. could you share what they are? Yeah, emergency emer underscore carper. carper. Perfect. Yeah, yeah so uh, or, website. And, and then the website, um, www.emergencycarper dot co dot uk or dot com both of work um, uh, out. you can get through to us on there eh? yeah so we've been splashing out pay for yeah, dot com and dot co dot uk yeah, yeah. no expense spent <laughs> no this is it a charity that <laughs> yeah, yeah, is wisely yeah. invested in yeah, this yeah. so message the page you'll get yeah. a response from a person not a bot 
Yeah, um, no, and if, then it's, it's either me or you know, Jamie. If you've got problems, do. send yeah. us a message. You know? yeah. I, I vouch for that because I've messaged them. You know, we've, yeah, we've, we've had, always we've had chats, you know. Yeah, yeah. We were right. we, we again. Kind of, kind of made it our thing to... Everyone gets, Part a of everyone, yeah. everyone gets a reply. Everyone gets a reply. Fantastic. And, and and through those sources, your website, social media, they can find out more about how to get involved. Yep. Yeah. So, we've, you know, we're always, always interested to hear what people, if they want to volunteer, uh, if people want to come along to the to the socials. Yeah, cool. We've got um, on the website, there's a link to the form. And I can give you a link that you can put on. Yes. This yeah. goes fine. Uh, a form they can fill out. And basically, it's like a mailing list type thing. It's very low key and it's just every soft. I mean, you're, I think you're on it here, don't you? So you had an email a little yep, while ago about the right, next yep, social coming yep, out. Yep. Um, we've also got, I mean, if you want to go that far, we've got a GoFundMe page yep, uh, that like people can donate to. We're always, you know, we're always interested in uh, that sort of side of things. Yeah. Again, I can give you a link to that, but it's that all on the website as well. Excellent. Um, yeah, and just yeah. we're only ever a message away, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And even if you, you know, people didn't want to fish uh, at one event and you just want to come down and help yeah. out and have a chat yeah. and... You know, you know, we always, always need people to, to carry bags. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, finally for me, 2023 is coming rapidly to an end as we get ready for the festive yeah. period. I'm looking yes. out the window in the mirror behind you guys yeah, and it's looking frosty and frostier. But but uh, on, on an upside, what, what's 2024 got in store for emergency campers? And then the same question to you, Ed, afterwards. So... We kind of set out. I, Jamie will tell you, I'm quite anal about things and the way things are done. I like it done properly. Yeah. I don't want to. You don't do things half ass. No, 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 no. So, the next step for us is to to get our volunteers trained to coaching level. Thanks. Um, and with that comes safeguarding. Yes. Um, but then on top of that, it's not a requirement. But we, I've kind of said we need everyone to be at least yeah, mental health trained. first aid yeah. trained. Mm -hmm. um, which is saying we, you know, I'm currently doing, even though I've got. Lots of experience with mental health. I'm doing yeah. a certificate as well. You're, you've uh -huh. signed on to it. So we're doing that. So then we can branch into doing that. And then we're going to look at um, just either registering as an official charity because in a minute we're just, we've got a small charity charter. Yeah. Um, obviously there's a lot of tax laws and stuff around yeah. that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, we're tax. either going to, I mean, we've, we've had some advice about becoming a community interest company rather mm -hmm. than a charity. That's the next step, basically looking exactly. at that getting some policies in place um, and then just getting a, a, a team of volunteers who yeah. can take people out coaching. Fantastic. Need to be at least level one coaching trained uh, and at least have mental health first aider. Fantastic, well. fantastic. And Ed, to yourself, what's, what's, what's yeah, next year looking like? 24 is exciting actually. Yeah, yeah really you've exciting. got a new house, which many won't know about. Got a about. new house, yeah, finally. It's uh, yeah. been a long time in the making. The longest move, like my boss said, the longest move <laughs> in the world. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah, really pleased to be in finally and have our first Christmas and we've got all the kids this Won year. Wonderful. So um, that's good because we sort of have them every other year. Um, so yeah, very excited about that. Um, not that I'm a massive Christmas person. Yeah, nor am I. Tell you. <laughs> but um, no, really looking forward to that. And then next year, um, got some socials coming up with Club Cup, uh, France for the first time. Really excited about that. Really looking forward to that. Um, What's your French like? Oui. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need one. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and um, yeah, um, yeah, Sandhurst. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I'll make. Um, uh, Norton Disney at the mm -hmm. beginning of the year but we'll see we'll see um, but yeah get back into some fishing because I've, I've taken a bit of time out recently just to because of the house move and, and everything else so no uh, and maybe a 40 next Ooh. year we'll yeah, see well, that'd be nice that'd, that'd be, be nice, nice wouldn't it? It? Um, fantastic yeah yeah, fantastic. what about you, Jack? What's your uh, your plans for twenty twenty four? Getting back to bloody fishing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nice I've, to I've, see you back. I've had one <laughs> one night of fishing, yeah. uh, which was a huge milestone. Uh, I joined a new lake, um, which within three hours of being at the lake, the hunger of fishing, which I didn't have for a year because of going through surgery and recovery, yeah. Yeah. came back and some. So um, awesome. my obsession's growing. So for me, it's all around fitness. Uh, what I class as wealth of health. Yeah. Um, becoming having a wealthy health um, my career is is very demanding and I love it and it's really growing so it's look for me the three categories are building my relationships and family my wealth of my health which includes getting back to fishing and being outdoors yeah, yeah. 
and then it's just a lot of career orientated as well it's a very busy time for me and the company yeah, that I work for and uh, so so yeah really exciting I will be in France with Ed awesome. I've penciled some dates in with George to get back to um, Europe and back to our own fishing and more films coming but right now more importantly it's bloody freezing mm. the fire's gone out <laughs> Jamie needs a wee but thank you uh, for listening in today thank you to Jamie and James thank from Emergency you. Carpers thank and you. Ed's Curlo yeah, really. uh, Angler Extraordinaire um, <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in the new year um, a message from me and Club Carp is uh, I hope you have a wonderful festive period I hope you found this um, conversation helpful it's a challenging conversation I'm sure we'd all appreciate a good cup of tea afterwards. Mm. But thank you for listening. As always, uh, anything you'd like to hear or focus sessions for our podcast moving forward, please uh, drop a comment below. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you later. See you guys. Cheers. Well done, guys. Really good conversation. Oh, I am shaking like a shit in the You're freezing. <laughs>